Okay, just another demo of how, you, how we might model a, a particular kind of form, and this was a question I received earlier in the term uh, about how we might model forms like these, um, these kind of free-form wooden uh, benches. Um, the good news is, I mean, these are expertly constructed, uh, especially with all the, the spacing as it's figured out. Uh, but the good news is, is that modeling the forms of these uh, is is uh, what Rhino is quite good at. So these are not as tricky as they may look. Uh, in fact, a lot of the tutorials we already covered, especially in the beginning, um, more or less cover this. It's just that this is a more complex form than a boat. So let's let's walk through this uh, in a quick demo. So the first thing I'll do is I'll draw a couple of top curves to draw out the let's say the, the profile and plan where it hits the ground. So I'll keep that something similar to what I'm looking at. Maybe so I'll just use a NURBS curve to just draw out something like this, and then I'll make a copy of this one um, like this, and uh, I'll play with the control points to make a few modifications to it, just to make it slightly different. Um, oops. Go. Yeah, nothing too, nothing too crazy, but just slightly different. All right, and um, and then I'm gonna give myself a few control points or reference points for where I want to draw out some sections. And uh, to do that, I'm just gonna draw out a construction line like that. Okay. And I'll, uh, I can delete the stuff I don't need. I'm going to divide this eh, maybe just three, three times just to give me a couple more sections. Let's take a look at this for a second here. I need at least one there and another one there. So, yeah, that, that should be all right. Um, so then I'm just going to section these lines using those points as a reference and just drag it out using the shift button to, to locate precisely where those sections are going to occur. Uh, and then I can start drawing them. So pick another layer. And here's where you have to make sure that planer is on down below. Um, and uh, it's a benefit to use the four views here. And we can, I can show you why as we move here. Uh, so the first thing I want to do is try to draw one of these kind of cross sections there at the end. And I'll uh, use a uh, control point curve again for that. And in the top view, I'll select my one of my points. And then um, you can see that I'm going to need to use the front view uh, to draw this curve. And I'm going to that point there. So sometimes what I like to do as well is to draw a little, co a little construction line down in that view so that I know which point I'm going to have to link up to after I'm done drawing the shape of this curve. So I can click here, use this view to draw my curve in its, in its form and then connect that back down to there. Okay, so let's take one more look here, all right. So I'm gonna cut out a little bit this, and I'm gonna freeform this, and I can always modify it a bit later. Okay, so that came out much larger than I had expected it to. Um, but let's make some changes to it. Um, I'm going to pull that in a little bit. Let's see if I can just, yeah, I'm going to delete that control point and that control point to give me, to scale it a little bit. Um, and I'm going to move this one in. You know, and I'm just eyeballing this. Uh, this is not something that has to be too precise for now. This is just for example. Take these two and move them down a bit like that. And I'm going to just uh, run a fair command on this. Uh, that's a little bit too much, so I'm going to change my tolerance to something lower. There we go. Make that nice, smooth curvature. So there's one cross section. Uh, so we're going to draw another one in the back here, and we're just going to make that one up, and then a couple in between. All right. In fact, just to make this a little bit faster, what I'll do is I'll just copy this one over to the back because I think that spacing is still the same. 
Yep. So a couple sections there, and um, and then what I'll do is I'll make a new one in between these points. So now I'll delete this and draw a new construction line down in this view, so I know which one I'm linking up to later. Connect here at the top view. Taking a look at my reference thing here. Okay, so it's going to stay sort of low, and then it's going to go way higher and oh, toward the end there. All right. So I'm going to pull out a point like this. Keep this one kind of low. And then bring it way up. And be careful not to snap to anything because it's going to pull your line back, which you don't want to do. Now this came out kind of lumpy and sort of ugly, so I'm going to just run, uh, again, I'm going to modify it using some control points, maybe delete that one to make it simpler. I probably can delete that one to make that simpler. Uh, use this one to drop this point down a bit. Drop, bring that one over. Bring that one over. Yeah. All right, that might work. Something like that. So there's one cross section like this. And then uh, again, to make this a little quicker, I'm gonna just copy this over here. See what it looks like if I mirror it. Now I know the spacing is not gonna be quite right here. Uh, hang on a sec, let me get the right axis. There we go. Delete the old one. Move that in and then um, move it. Make another reference down in the other view. Okay, I can look at the control point here and just simply force that to met, meet, you, meet up. All right, so this uh, is going to give us a pretty crazy form. Let's see what it does. Proportionally, it's very different than the one that we've been looking at, but I think you get the idea of basically just kind of controlling drawing out the general form of this through some corner line work frame and um, we should be able to sweep the rest. Okay, so let's run the sweep to command. Oops. I am not in. There we go. Sweep to. Okay. First rail, second rail. Select your cross sections in order. And off you go. And there's our surface, which, <laughs> yeah, again, is... Um, not really something you want to sit on, probably. Uh, we're getting some pretty deep valleys in here and stuff, but uh, I think you get the idea. And, uh, you know, if I were to work on this further, I'd probably drop this down a little bit, drop that height to make this transition a bit smoother. But in any case, let's, uh, let's work with it. I'm going to just move all this stuff over so I can carry on with the next steps. I'm going to make a copy here. Um, this came out pretty pretty decent in terms of its wireframe, um, but in order to model, let's say, uh, or at least get a start on modeling these, the the wooden lathes that go across the wooden strips, we're going to want a little bit more of a probably a regular grid on this. Uh, and again, this is should be taken with a disclaimer. The way I'm going to show you to get started on this is only one version. Uh, there are others, and in fact, to get better spacing on this, um, we may need to try another method. Um, but this just builds a little bit on some of the things we covered earlier. So the first thing I'll do is I'll rebuild the surface. Um, paying attention, of course, to where this, where my U and V's begin. And then uh, just seeing how, if I make a change to that, what the, what the result is. So let's say we're going from 62 to 40 and 11 to 35 in that direction. See what that looks like. And that, that evens it out a bit. Uh, it's, you can see that it's a bit more evenly distributed. Um, and you're going to have to decide on whether or not you're, you're happy with this general breakdown. What I would recommend is that you know first what you're looking to do. So if you want really dense lines in one direction and less dense lines in the other, you can change your U's and V's for that. So let's go ahead and rebuild that again. Um, increasing the number, let's say, in one of these directions to get a different, to get, uh, a different version. And that, that increased it in the long direction. Let's try again to uh, increase it also in this direction. So let's make these the same. And um, yeah, so you get the idea that rebuilding is going to give you a 
different wireframe. And that wireframe can be extracted to form the guidelines of the wooden pieces. Another way to do this would be to cut many sections in this and then divide all those sections. So let me show you that option first before we go to the rebuild part because that's slightly different. Um, for this, what I'm going to do is I'll just contour this. So I'm going to run the contour command. Uh, select that as my base. Select this as my perpendicular direction. And then the distance between contours, I'm just going to say, let's see, I'm in inches here, um, maybe 10. That's too big. Sorry about that. I uh, wasn't sure how large I made this. So let's run the contour again. Let's do this, and then we'll just do one inch in between. All right. And there's a whole set of sections that we've now drawn through the object that are orthogonal uh, to the um, x, y axes. What we can then do is take all these and uh, divide them the same number of times. So let's divide them, let's say, 50 times uh, to draw all these points. Um, this would be also one way of, and then connecting the dots would be the next step, which is very laborious, so don't get me wrong. Um, so if you need this kind of precision, I would recommend that we transition into Grasshopper for this, but the other thing uh, to do it manually would be to um, start using interpolated point curves and connecting the dots across. You can also get away with using less sections. I mean, you know, my contour was maybe a little, a little too tight. Um, one inch interval is maybe overkill, but I did want to just demonstrate the idea here. And by doing that, I'm starting to draw out the, let's say, the center lines of those wooden pieces as they go across the sections. And it really does depend on how you want to uh, construct this. Uh, but in any case, you get the idea. And off you go. Now, the quicker way, um, and maybe the less accurate way, it would be to just extract this uh, wireframe. And you can work with that as a bunch of lines. Okay, and that's the wireframe. Um, but if you really want to be specific, um, here's where you can take a look. So here we have, clearly we have less sections in one direction than we do pieces in the other, all right? So uh, here's where we can use the contour command a little bit more accurately. So let's contour this instead with uh, five inches in between, just for the, again, sake of argument. Let's move these over. And now what we'll do is we'll extract the isocurves only in the long direction here. So let's type in extract isocurve. And by default, my screen is showing me the U direction. If you're not seeing this, if you're seeing the opposite direction, for example, this, you could um, just change that up at the top. And now I've got the U selected, and that's giving me the long direction. And then what we can do is just click Extract All up top, hit Enter. I can then move these to that point there. And now I've got something that more closely resembles the object we're trying to create. Of course, putting these on different layers, for example, the perpendicular sections versus the long sections would be a good idea. The other thing is keep in mind that the contour command uh, may or may not give you the end section. In fact, it's likely not to because it's keeping a common spacing. So a better way to take those long or the short sections would probably be to once again pull out the, the bounding in a way, a kind of a bounding box, like I did before. Divide this line as a construction line. Let me make sure that one is perpendicular. Make sure to trim it. Now, if we divide this line as a construction line into however many sections we want, let's just say 15. Uh, whoops, made a mistake. Got to get rid of that. This line here. We can divide this. Uh, let's say 10 times. Okay. And now we can take our sections in the top view like so. Section. Start. End. Start. End. Start. End. 
and so we have even spacing and we know that that even spacing is re is uh, de depends on the overall length of the object so that's a, a nice accurate way of doing this as well so let's pull that over put the uh, I'm going to extract the ISO curves again extract all hit enter move bring them over and there you go and now the fun process begins of twisting the sweeps along these center lines so that they stay oriented to your section and that is something that we started to look at in the crystal bridges tutorial um, and uh, what you'll need there is a, a normal direction or a perpendicular direction off of the section curves and you'll need a section uh, cross-section profile of your little square shaped wooden piece the big long pieces um, are going to need to be oriented perpendicular to all those sections at every point from there you can do the sweep and it should be pretty accurate and you'll get a bunch of twisting um, but if your form is a little less um, let's say intense than this one uh, you should be within the realm of material capacity um, but in any case that's a different conversation probably a different exercise but for now I just wanted to quickly demonstrate you know one more one more time some of the um, earlier skills that we looked at just in the boat modeling but applying those exact processes to a more complex shape okay